the International Soccer Preview. We are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to our continuation of Series 19. This one looking at the players of the 2023 Asian Cup, due to be played in January 2024. This episode is looking at the players of Oman. Here we go! Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. I'm Kevin and this is Series 19 on the players of the 2023 Asian Cup, played in 2024. This episode covers Oman's players. So we're doing this media cast in two parts. Part one uh, here is a look at the candidates for the squad and their likelihood of making it. Uh, we think we went into too much detail in previous player media casts we've done. So we're aiming for a lighter, more narrative uh, version this time. Part two will come out when the squad lists are released and the final squad is selected. Uh, we think that'll be in late December or early January. And at that time, we'll go back over the list that we compile here and see who made it and who didn't. And we'll also cover uh, some other things that I'll talk about uh, in the last part of the media cast. Uh, we have made a separate video on what we'll be covering over the next nine months. YouTube watchers can see the link to that on the screen, and it can also be found in the show notes for both watchers and listeners. In short, we're focused on the Asian and African Cups, with both taking place in early 2024. And we have also started coverage of World Cup 2026 qualifying. So this episode will have three sections. Uh, section one, where we give and discuss some general information on the team. Section two uh, is the main section where we look at the main candidates in each position and judge their likelihood of making the final squad. And section three, a short one where we give any closing thoughts and there we will preview part two in more detail. Uh, let's begin then. Uh, just a note on my shirt. I uh, don't have an Oman shirt. I hope to get one. Uh, so uh, all I can do now is approximate the colors and uh, it seems like my whale shirt approximates the colors quite well. Okay, let's move on to uh, section one. And uh, some uh, comments on the squad or general observations. So uh, just a note on the game count. Uh, Bahrain actually played 23 games, but the information we had on two of them was incomplete. So uh, when we look at the participation of the players over the past two years, uh, we'll be looking at the 21 games that we have uh, good information for. Uh, the other one for uh, Oman is that there's not a lot of candidates. Uh, it's a small country, so um, uh, that's basically it. There's not uh, a lot of candidates that we need to go through, and uh, usually the players who are starters uh, kind of remain as starters rather than a lot of mixing and matching. Okay, let's uh, go to the retirement section. So we're kind of going from... Uh, 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 basically veteran players with 60 or more caps who have retired uh, since the 2019 Asian Cup. And a big one is uh, central midfielder uh, Ahmed, Ahmed Kano. Uh, Ahmed Kano is actually the fifth most capped international player uh, in the world. Um, uh, that list actually credits him with 183 caps, but uh, my main source credits him with 192. And if that's correct, uh, he would be uh, fourth. Uh, regardless, though, uh, he played from 2003 to 2019, and according to my main source, had 192 caps and 22 goals. And he last played for the... Uh, um Omani national team in November 2019 so uh carried on a little bit after the Asian Cup there and um and then uh, retired from the national team I think he's only recently actually retired from Inter or from uh, football altogether uh next we have Abdulaziz Al-Mukbali 
Uh, he played with the team from 2011 to 2021 with 100 caps and 34 goals. Uh, so he actually was not part of the uh, uh, Asian Cup squad in 2019, surprisingly, because he was the top scorer in qualifying uh, for them. Uh, but I couldn't find uh, any uh, specific reason whether he was injured or anything like that. Anyway, he also continued on until uh, November 2021. Uh, that was when he played his last game for the team, uh, Abdulaziz Makbali. We also have uh, Raid Ibrahim Saleh. So uh, he was with uh, Oman from 2012 to 2019 with 96 caps and six goals. He's actually only uh, 31 years old. Uh, now, but he did last appear for the team in October of 2019, so it's not really a uh, consideration for this squad. And finally, uh, we have right back Saad Suhai Al Mukaini, uh, sometimes called Saad Suhai and sometimes Saad Al Mukaini. Uh, he was with the team from 20 2006 to 2019. He also had more than 100 caps. 123 caps and just one goal and um uh he last played for oman in november 2019 uh, in the gulf cup uh, that year okay let's move on and take a look at uh, oman's club affiliations so uh by far most of the players uh, play domestically um and uh, the clubs, uh, the three clubs that are contributing most uh, to the uh, national lineup right now are Al Steeb, uh, Al Nada, and uh, Dofar. Al Steeb seems to uh, contribute uh, quite a lot there. Uh, outside of the country, the players are uh, really just in the uh, region here. So, uh, Qatar, Bahrain. Jordan, I don't see any uh, right now uh, current players with Saudi Arabian clubs, but I've definitely seen that uh, in their uh, in their history. So Saudi Arabia, we could add to the list. And uh, in terms of big names, uh, they don't really have any players with uh, uh, big name clubs. All right, let's move on to recent games. So. Um, we will start uh, with the World Cup qualifiers. We're not really interested in the results of these games. However, we will be looking uh, at the participation of players over the past two years. And so that's why we're kind of doing a run through of uh, the games they've played over the past two years. So we begin with the uh, World Cup 2022 qualifiers. Uh, they reached the final round there. So they were playing the last of those games from January to March. Uh, 2022, so four games there against Saudi Arabia, Australia, Vietnam, and China. Uh, after that, they had a couple of friendlies in June. That was against Nepal and New Zealand. Uh, two, in, excuse me, two in September against Iraq and uh, Iraq and Jordan. Uh, strangely, I guess they gave uh, players time off in October. Uh, because while most other countries were playing uh, friendlies, then um, Oman wasn't. But they came back in November 2022 uh, with friendlies against Germany and Belarus. And uh, finally, in 2022, they had uh, two games, uh, both against Syria. In uh, the beginning of 2023, they entered the Gulf Cup that took place uh, in Iraq. Uh, in January 2023, uh, they went all the way to the final. So they had five games uh, against Iraq, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and then uh, in the semi-final Bahrain, and in the final Iraq again. Five games in the Gulf Cup, and for the most part, they did send their uh, best players to that cup. A couple uh, were not uh, sent, but most were. Uh, friendlies in March 2023. Uh, they played actually Kyrgyzstan's under-23 team, which is interesting because they meet Kyrgyzstan in the group stage of the Asian Cup here. Uh, they also played Lebanon that uh, in March 2023. Uh, June 2023, uh, they actually uh, were invited to a tournament, the CAFA Cup. That's the Central 
Asian Football Association, the first actually uh, inaugural edition of their cup um, in June 2023. And they played four games there because they passed the group stage. Uh, those were against Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Turmeni, uh, Tur Turkmenistan, and Kyrgyzstan again. So meeting them several times before meeting them in the Asian Cup, the two teams should be uh, familiar with each other there. And uh, finally, we have uh, friendlies. Uh, sorry, that's uh, four games then in June of 2023. Uh, finally, uh, friendlies in September 2023 uh, against Palestine and USA. And then once again, it looks like they gave their players time off in October uh, because uh, in October 2023, just like a year earlier, uh, they didn't schedule any friendlies. Okay, well, we're more interested in the formations uh, for that than the results. So we don't want to go too much into the weeds on this. They have used a couple of uh, 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 formations like a 4-1-4-1 or a 4-5-1 uh, a couple of times. But to boil it down to a pattern, uh, really, uh, mostly, predominantly what they use is a 4-4-2 or some variation on a 4-4-2. So, uh, for example, uh, sometimes a 4-2-2-2. Um, so the midfielder, uh, midfield basically divided into uh, uh, a 2 and a 2. Uh, also a 4-3-1-2. This they used quite a bit during the uh, uh, Gulf Cup there a 4-3-1-2. And in one game, a 4-1-3-2. Again, a variation. Uh, on the midfield or uh, a slightly more complex variation which they used against uh, germany and belarus and uh, a couple of times since then a four one two one two so not only the mid so that's actually a variation you could say on a four three three um anyway it's got one defensive midfielder two central midfielders one attacking midfielder so it's often called a diamond formation so i guess it is considered a 442 and then two up top uh, but basically without fail uh, we do see four at the back and uh, usually two uh, attackers up front but uh, sometimes just the uh, one attacker up front in in actually not that often so usually two okay and uh, that is true also of their recent formations uh variations on the 442 formation uh okay let's move on to uh their upcoming games so uh world cup qualifiers they have uh in november 2022 so uh actually qualifying began in the region in october with a preliminary round and um uh they did not have to take part in that, but uh, the opponent that they faced first, Chinese Taipei, uh, did have to pass that round, and they did so by winning over East Timor. And we did a set of uh, uh, a series on those um, uh, preliminary games, and it was a good opportunity actually to look at some of the uh, smaller teams that we don't get to look at uh, that often. So uh, I enjoyed doing that. Anyway, emerging from that was their first. Uh, opponent Chinese Taipei or uh, Taiwan and that is a home game that they'll play on November 15th and by the way uh, we're doing this uh, media cast about a week prior to that uh, there and then uh, familiar foes recently they face uh, Kyrgyzstan uh, sorry uh, that is uh, away they're facing Kyrgyzstan away uh, so not only have they met uh, them a couple of times uh, before this they meet them here and they're in the same group with them in the Asian Cup too so they'll meet them one time more uh, so they'll be very familiar with each other by then uh, we think that um, uh, they may experiment a little bit uh, with Chinese Taipei especially at home that'll be an easy game uh, but on the road against Kyrgyzstan uh, we hope to see something similar to the squad that they'll bring to the uh, Asian Cup uh, in terms of friendlies, uh, prior to the tournament, uh, they haven't scheduled any yet, but we think they will schedule one or two games. And uh, we may report on that if we do an update podcast shortly before the Cup. 
Okay, let's move on to uh, section two, uh, the main section, the candidates. And so we're going to begin by looking at the managers. And uh, the uh, outgoing manager, we'll say, is Pim Ber Berbeek. Uh, he was the manager during the 2019 Asian Cup, so we'll kind of begin the narrative with him. And uh, he actually remained on after, uh, no, he didn't. He uh, retired in 2019 or left the team in 2019. Uh, after that, they actually had two managers before, uh, two managers in quick succession. One of them was Erwin uh, um, Koeman, a Dutch manager, and another as uh, Goran Stevanovic, a Serbian manager. Both of those were fairly short-lived. Uh, and then in 2020, uh, they settled on the current manager, Ivan, uh, sorry, Branko Ivankovic here. So Branko Ivankovic is a Croatian manager and uh, has been uh, manager of the Oman national team. In terms of national teams, he was also manager of Iran in 2003 to 2006. And uh, he actually led them through the 2004 Asian Cup. So this will be his second Asian Cup. Uh, he was also manager of Iran for the 2006 World Cup. Uh, otherwise, he's been manager of club teams and some pretty, uh, pretty good ones too. Persepolis in Iran, Dynamo Zagreb in, uh, in Croatia, uh, a couple of times with them and uh, so on. He's also been involved with the Croatian national team, but as an assistant manager. So there we have it, Ivan, uh, sorry, Branko Ivankovic, uh, uh, leading them through the tournament. Okay. Uh, let's begin with goalkeepers. So I'll just outline the process we use. So first we're gonna list uh, the goalkeepers and I'll put a couple just as an example. So. Uh, we have a definite candidate in Ibrahim Al, Al Mukheni, and also a definite candidate in Fayez Al Rashedi. So you can see that uh, Ibrahim Al Mukheni's name is in grey there, uh, if you're looking at the YouTube graphic, and that indicates that he hasn't been through a tournament. Whereas Fayez Al Rashedi, uh, his name is in the black text, and so he uh, he has been through a tournament. Um, so we're going to list the names first, and then we'll go back and kind of give a bit of biographical information, especially on the main candidates, uh, with a focus on their participation over the past two years. And finally, we'll kind of summarize with a narrative uh, of the position, what's been going on in the position. So not only do we have those two definite candidates, we have a third one in Ahmed Al-Rahawi. Uh, Al Rawahi, I should say. Um, so, uh, just three candidates there. So, uh, they're all definite, and we'll talk about uh, how that works uh, soon. But let's go to the biographies with Ibrahim Al Mukheni. So, he's been with the team since 2021, but has 22 caps already and uh, has started 16 of their 21 games over the past two years and was on the bench for five others. So basically he starts 75% of the games and is always called up. That's why we have him as a definite candidate. Uh, Faiz al Rashedi uh, has been with the team much longer since 2010 and he has 71 caps. He's uh, 36 years old uh, here and he was a starter uh, in the Asian Cup 2019 he uh, made some good saves especially against uh, japan uh, in that tournament and uh, over the past two years he started five of their 21 games uh, so basically the five that mukami didn't start uh, he started uh, and he was on the bench for 14 games and just two games that he was not selected for so uh, it seems like the second string keeper now uh, but definitely uh, uh, will go to the cup, we think, partly because of the uh, lack of um, alternative candidates here. So that leaves Ahmed Al-Rawahi, and uh, he started none of the games because the other two started all of them. However, uh, he was on the bench for 19 of the 21 games uh, and not selected for two others, so he is always called up uh, as well. Uh, and really, those are the only viable candidates we have. Um, 
and so it looks like all three uh, we're fairly certain will come to the cup so let me finish the section with a little narrative and uh, it was uh, Rushedi uh, Al Rushedi was the starting keeper and in fact the captain of the team and uh, we ha have evidence of that uh, right at the beginning of our period because he started the first two World Cup qualifiers right there in January 2022. Uh, shortly after, Al Mulcahy took over and uh, basically started all of the games and the few he didn't, uh, Rashidi uh, came back in uh, as the backup keeper. So we consider him to be the second string keeper. Uh, Rahawi, um, uh, he does have seven caps with the team. The last one of them was in November 2021, uh, but he hasn't played since, but he's almost always called up uh, and on the bench, so the third string keeper there. So uh, pretty uh, pretty clear there, and uh, not much room for uh, other candidates to come in. Okay, let's move on to defenders, and we'll begin with cent uh, central defenders. And we have a definite candidate in Ahmed Al Kamisi, and then uh, four likely candidates here. Uh, they usually bring five or six to the cup central defenders. So Juma Al Habshi, uh, Fami Durbin, Khalid Al Breki, uh, and Ahmed Al Matushi. And then we have one candidate who is a possible at the possible level, and that is Mohammed Al Musalami. And that's uh, it. So let's go back and look uh, from the beginning. So uh, Al Kamisi uh, doesn't have any um, tournament experience. He, he got his first cap in 2021, but has 35 caps since that time and uh, started 18 of their 21 games over the past two years, uh, subbed in for two and on the bench for one other. So he is uh, always called up. And I'll just note here that uh, he did play as a right back for a couple of games during the Gulf Cup, but uh, primarily a center back and pretty much a starter uh, all the time there. Uh, moving on to our likely candidates, Juma Al Habshi. Uh, also with the team since 2021, and almost as many caps, actually, uh, 32 caps. Um, he's actually one of the few players playing outside of uh, um, Oman right now. He's with al Khor in Qatar. Uh, but he hasn't started as much over the past two years. So nine of their 21 games he started, subbed in for three and on the bench for six. Still, only three games that he wasn't selected for. Uh, however, he has been used a little less lately. He uh, started only one of the last seven. Uh, of the, over the last seven games, he started one, subbed in for two, benched for two, and not selected for one. So maybe dropping off a little bit, uh, Juma Al-Habshi. Uh, next, uh, a likely candidate, Fami Durbin. So uh, Durbin has been with the team since 2017 with 34 caps and one goal. And uh, he started eight of their 21 games. So one less than Al Habshi. And uh, he was subbed in for two and on the bench for six and not selected for five matches. And that includes the CAFA Cup matches. So he's one of the few players who uh, didn't participate in the uh, Central Asian uh, Cup that they were invited to. So uh, Durbin, a likely candidate. Next, we have uh, Khalid al -Breki. He's the first one so far that we talked about who was part of the team for the Asian Cup in 2019. He was a starter there, al -Breki. And he's been with the team since 2018 uh, with a similar number of caps, 32 caps uh, for him. And he started five, and in fact, the last five of their 21 games, as well as subbing in for seven and on the bench for three, uh, not selected for six matches. So uh, really making his way into the team. In fact, I think I'm going to move him uh, to the top of the list there because uh, he uh, started the last five matches whereas we saw that al Habshi was kind of dropping off uh, a little bit there, so kind of al Breaky uh, moving into the starting position. And finally, in the likely category, Ahmed al Matruzi. So al Matruzi, um, 
is quite new to the team since 2022. Uh, he got his first cap in November of 2022 and started one only one of their remaining 15 games. Uh, he was subbed in for one on the bench for nine, though, uh, and not selected for three matches. So uh, we he's a likely candidate, but he's not really a starter. Uh, he's usually sitting on the bench. So um, uh, Al Matruzzi. And uh, finally, we have the candidate at the portable level, Mohamed Al Musalami, uh, a real veteran with the team actually since 2011 and 112 caps. So he was a starter in the 2015 and the 2019 Asian Cups. Uh, he's only started five of their 21 games over the past two years, subbed in for three and on the bench for uh, two, and uh, not selected. Uh, for, okay, the first four matches and most significantly the last seven matches. So uh, making his way off the team, it seems. Uh, we might even say possible but unlikely uh, having missed the last seven matches. But uh, he is a veteran, so we'll kind of give him the benefit of the doubt there. All right, that's all the candidates. So uh, as we saw in the formations, it's always a four-man defense, so two central defenders, and they usually bring five or six to the tournament. Uh, it was a mix of al uh Durbin, and Al-Habshi at the beginning, and that continued with Al-Musalami added to the mix around the time of the Gulf Cup, which was in late 22, uh, late 2022. Actually, I think it was in January 2023. Uh, recently, though, Al Musalami and Durbin have dropped out. Actually, Al Musalami dropped off the team, as we saw, missing the last seven matches, and Durbin dropping to the bench. And uh, we also saw that Al Habshi has been playing less, also. So uh, consistently, we have seen Kalishi. Um, uh, uh, as one of the starters, and recently he's been partnered with Al Brakey, uh, who had actually regularly been on the bench before that, but is now becoming a bit of a starter. Starter. So if I were to pre predict the starters, I would say uh, Kalishi and Al Brakey as the two starters, but um, I do expect to see a little bit of rotation in the cup as well. Okay, that is central defense. And uh, I put that in the wrong spot, so uh, we will fix that up later. Let's go to left backs. Um, and we begin with uh, the candidates. Ahmed al Kabi is a definite candidate. And we have uh, Sami al Hamrashti as a possible candidate, but with uh, an asterisk of a, an injury doubt hanging over him. And uh, we also have, uh, okay, well, I'll put his name on the list because he's a veteran, uh, Ali al uh but he seems to be off the squad. I will talk about him, uh, uh, though. Uh, I think he's part of the narrative uh, also. So, uh, okay, let's go back to the beginning because uh, really Ahmed Al-Kabi had this position completely covered. He started 18 of the 21 games over the past two years, uh, subbed in for one, and uh, not selected for two matches, but that was the first two matches uh, during this period. So he's always there, uh, al Kabi. He's been on the team since 2018 with 33 caps. So um, uh, especially recently, he has uh, really entrenched himself in the position. Uh, the possible candidate, Sami al um got his first cap recently in March of 2023 and didn't start any of their games, but he subbed in for one and was on the bench for three uh, and not selected for one. But he was out with an injury in the September games. Uh, if you recall, they didn't play any friendlies in October. And uh, he is still injured with an unknown return date. So uh, it seems he was being groomed as the backup for the uh, left-back position. And uh, in as far as that goes, he was basically replacing Al Busaidi, who I'll move on to uh, next. 
Uh, Al Buzaidi was the starter for the left back position in the Asian Cup in 2019, uh, and so uh, basically, it's only um, uh, it was only in late 2021 uh, that Al Kabi took over, uh, and Al Buzaidi played his last game. So uh, basically, Al Kabi is moving up to the number one position, and uh, they've been pretty slow about getting around to uh, uh, finding a backup. Um, for Al Kabi, uh, which is maybe why he has played uh, so many games. Uh, and it looks like they were finding one in Sami Al Hamrashti, but now that's up in the air depending on his injury. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not sure uh, what way they're going to go with that, but let us uh, summarize the position uh, then. So it's actually fairly easy to summarize. Uh, it was Al Busaidi basically until. Uh, he left in November 2021. I think they were actually sharing it for a while. But since November 2021, it's been Al Kabi all the way. Um, actually, in the first two games of 2022, uh, um, and in one other game, we saw that he was uh, not selected or missing for three games. In that case, three different players uh, stood in. One is a, a right back who's now off the team. Another is uh, central midfielder Mataz Saleh, and then right back Mohamed Ramadan. So actually, this is quite telling. Uh, firstly, they don't, they haven't had a left back to cover Al Kabi, uh, and so have had to use out of position players. And secondly, they are grooming Al Hamrashti as a backup for the position but now his fitness is thrown into question. So a little bit of a drama at the left-back position, but only uh, only as far as the backup uh, player goes, because Al Kabi is definitely the starter there. Okay, over to the right side, and uh, we have a likely candidate in Mahmoud Mabrook or Mahmoud al uh, I'm going to call him Mahmoud Mabrook because that's the one I see most commonly uh, in my sources. Uh, a likely candidate. Next, a possible candidate. We mentioned him as covering the uh, left-back position in one game, Mohamed Ramadan. And uh, we're going to put uh, Amjad Al-Harthi on the list as well. Uh, he seems to be off the squad, but he does feature uh, in the narrative. So I'll talk about him a little bit. Okay, let's go back to Mahmoud Mabrook. Uh, actually, he starts only smatteringly. Um, uh, he's been with the team since 2016 with 32 caps, uh, uh, but over the past two years, he's only started four of their 21 games. Uh, he subbed in for three and on the bench for five, uh, and then not selected for nine games. So uh, he was uh, on the squad for the Asian Cup in 2019. Uh, but was just on the bench there, didn't see any action. And that really seems to be his role, at least recently with the team, as more of a backup player. Um, Mohamed Ramadan, our likely, or sorry, our possible candidate, um, it seemed like he got a fleeting trial with the, uh, with the team uh, when he um, uh, got his first cap in February 2022. He was subbed in for four. Uh, and on the bench for two. Uh, but then he wasn't selected, again, uh, all the way up until the the um, second last match in September where he reappeared. So uh, when a player shows up kind of uh, uh, that close to the end, we have to uh, put him at the possible level uh, because he's obviously being considered. So I'm looking forward to November uh, to see if he actually... Um, uh, gets them some time there, or uh, sorry, is selected there. Uh, as far as Am uh, Amjad Al-Harthi goes, he actually started uh, nine of their games over the period uh, the last two years, uh, but he wasn't selected for the last 11 matches, so he's been off the team now uh, for more than a year. Okay, those are our candidates, and it uh, looks like we don't have a starter there, so uh, let me explain the position. Um, it was actually Amjad Al-Harthi who held the position uh, regularly until the first game of the Gulf Cup in uh, January 2023. 
Um, as I said, Mabrook only starts smatteringly, so it's been several out-of-position players stepping in for one or maybe two games, and those include uh, the central defender we've met, Kamisi, and the central midfielder we saw filling in as left-back once, uh, Mata Sale. Um, but recently, despite the odd start from Mabrook, it has actually been left midfielder uh, Al-Yamadi, who we'll meet uh, uh, soon. So really, the position is unsettled, and it's obvious that Mabrook is not their first choice for the position. They seem to prefer him as a uh, backup player. So um, uh, perhaps why that's why they brought uh, Ramadan back in right at the end there, and uh, he's being reconsidered as a starter. Uh, but right now, it seems like uh, Al, -Yah Al Yamadi is uh, the most likely candidate for this position, even though he's a left midfielder, and we'll meet him soon. Okay, that is it uh, for the uh, defense, and we move on to the midfield. And we're going to start with a, a kind of a versatile midfielder. In fact, I've uh, mentioned his name twice already. Uh, at the portable level is Mataz Saleh. Uh, so he really seems kind of the ultimate backup man. Uh, he's much more of a sub than a starter. He's only started three games, um, uh, but he's subbed into a lot of games. Uh, he's the only candidate here, so I can get into his uh, his bio. Uh, he's been with the team since 2016, Saleh, and there's 23 caps and two goals, so he does get onto the field. And he was uh, part of the squad for the Asian Cup in 2019, although he uh, didn't see any action in that cup. Uh, over the past two years, Saleh has started three of their 21 games, uh, subbed in for nine, on the bench for two, and not selected for seven others, including the last four matches. Um, so I don't know. Maybe the utility man is kind of uh, making his way off the squad. Uh, but he seems quite useful. We've seen him already uh, covering as left-back. Um, uh, in fact, in the three starts he's got, none of them is in his coded position as a central midfielder. Uh, we've seen him as a left-back, a right-back, and uh, we'll see him as a left midfielder as well. But anyway, he's coded as a central midfielder, but we consider him a versatile midfielder, um, Martin Saleh. Uh, a portable candidate. Okay, let's go to the defensive midfielders, and we have two candidates. The first one is a definite candidate in uh, Harib Al Sadi, and the other a portable candidate in Ali Musa. Uh, those are the only two we have there. Uh, so let's uh, do a little bio on them. Uh, Harib Al Sadi has been with the team since. 2016 and is a veteran with 84 caps and one goal and um, he was a, a starter in the 2019 asian cup and over the past uh, two years has started 20 of their 21 games so uh he was on the bench for the one other so obviously a very important player he's he's really a staple in the midfield and uh, captain of the team as well uh, our possible candidate, Ali Musa, doesn't have any caps for the national team, but he got his first appearance on the bench in December 2022 uh, and hasn't started any games, but he was on the bench for four, uh, including the last two matches, which is why we have him at the possible uh, level. He wasn't selected for nine of the games, but has been selected recently. So Ali Musa, uh, a possible candidate. And uh, we won't uh, summarize the position uh, because actually I think we will summarize the position uh, here. We usually kind of combine uh, defensive and central midfielders, but it's actually a bit more defined for the Oman team. Uh, as we saw in the formations, they use a diamond formation quite often or a kind of uh, a defensive midfielder. Uh, two central midfielders and one attacking midfielder. So um, there is a defensive midfielder, and when there is, it's Harib Al Sada uh, who plays the role. Um, and when there's two midfielders, it's Harib Al Sadi and 
it's Al Sadi and someone else. So basically, uh, consider him kind of a fixture at the back. Okay, we will talk about the central midfielders. And here, uh, we have no definite candidates, but three likely ones. Uh, the first one is uh, Arshad Al Alawi, and then Abdullah Fawaz, and Musab Al Mamari. And we have. Um, uh, one candidate who I think I will put on the list. Um, he last played in March 2022. Uh, this is Omar Al Fazari, but uh, seems to be off the team now, even though he's only 27 years old. Uh, but I think I wanted him on the list because he's part of the uh, narrative. Uh, okay, uh, we also have Mosin Al Kaldi, who last appeared in March 22 as well, but I wasn't going to put him on the list. Okay, maybe I'll figure out what my reasons were there. Uh, let's go back and look at the players in a bit more detail. So, um, Arshad Al Alawi uh, has been with the team since 2019 and has 37 caps and six goals. Uh, that's pretty good because he's just 23 years old. And Al Alawi has started 13 of their 21 games over the past two years, subbed in for four and on the bench for one, uh, and not selected for just three matches. However, uh, that includes the last two matches. Uh, so we might have had him as a definite candidate otherwise, but uh, a bit of a question mark there. Uh, and he. Um, uh, some sources have him as an attacking midfielder. Uh, over the course of this uh, media cast, I think you'll see why. Uh, I just want to note that he shouldn't be confused with the forward Rabia Al Alawi, who we'll get to uh, soon. Anyway, quite consistently called up and uh, quite versatile in the midfield is uh, Arshad Al Alawi. Uh, he does favor the left side, but sometimes he plays as a right or attacking midfielder. Uh, he's coded as a central midfielder, so um, somewhere towards the left upper part uh, is where he favors. Okay, next we have a likely candidate, Abdullah Fawaz. And uh, Fawaz has been with the team since 2017 with 31 caps and five goals. Um, but he wasn't part of the... Uh, Asian Cup squad in 2019. He was on the preliminary squad, but not selected for the final squad. Over the past two years, he's been selected for 10 of their 21 games, uh, subbed in for one and not selected for 10. Uh, but all of those were in the middle of the period. In fact, I think he was not called up for the um, uh, not called up for the uh, Golf Cup and for games around that. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, Fawaz, Abdullah Fawaz, a likely candidate. Uh, yes, I have a note here. He started, uh, he did miss 10 in a row in the middle of the period, but he started the last seven games as, and generally plays on the right side. So uh, we do have him as a likely candidate because of his recent starts. Uh, finally, we have uh, Musab Al-Mamari. And uh, he's uh, new to the team. He got his first appearance in September 2022 and started uh, only one of their remaining 17 games, actually. But he was subbed in for 10 and on the bench for four. So just one match that he was not selected for. So we consider Al Mamari a likely candidate to be named to the squad, uh, but um, uh, will probably be a substitute rather than a starter. Uh, okay, that uh, is the end of that section. So let's go back to the um, narrative. And as I said, when there are two central midfielders, it's uh, Al Sadi, uh, always one of them, the defensive midfielder. And then uh, basically, it's a fairly even distribution between Al Alawi and uh, Fawaz. But as I said, Al Alawi kind of uh, tends to be on the left and Fawaz on the uh, right, and now I'm wondering to myself why I had a note to post uh, Al Fazari's name um, because he wasn't part of the narrative. I think it's because he's 27 years old. Uh, uh, that was my reasoning. 
Uh, okay, uh, next we look on to the uh, left midfielders, and we actually don't have anyone coded uh, as a left midfielder. However, the formation does uh, often have something close to a left midfielder and a right midfielder. Again, it's always a variation of the 4 4 2. So uh, if it's a 4 3 1 2, for example, or even the diamond formation, a 4 1 2 1. Uh, there is a kind of a left and a right midfielder too. So uh, generally it is the central midfielders who cover this position. Um, uh, central midfielder, so it'll be uh, Al Alawi, but sometimes it is the left winger who we'll meet soon, uh, Zahir Al Akbari uh, coming back uh, if it's a, a left midfielder role. But honestly, if it's Defensive, think Al-Alawi, and offensive, think Al-Akbari. Uh, okay, and on the right side, we do actually have a player uh, coded as a right midfielder. So uh, we saw that sometimes central midfielder Fawaz covers this position, but more often uh, it is Jamil Al-Yamadi, uh, the definite candidate uh, we have, who's coded as a right midfielder. And actually, that is uh, what he is. So uh, Al Yamadi has been with the team since 2016 and has 61 caps. Uh, so just stepping into veteran territory there. And he has started 15 of their 21 games over the past two years. Uh, he was subbed in for three. So just three matches that he wasn't selected for. And he was part of the squad in the uh, 2019 Asian Cup, uh, starting three of their four games there. So Al Yamadi... Um, uh, is uh, um, coded as a right winger on uh, one website, my main uh, source actually, but I don't think he is a right winger because uh, he tends to be a bit more defensive. When it's a right attacking midfield or, or even a right forward, uh, it tends to be one of the, it tends to be a more attacking player who takes the role. But when it is like a right midfield role, uh, it's uh, Al Yamadi, and we see actually that recently he's often been playing as the uh, right defender, and actually may be used in that position, uh, the right back position in the cup. Anyway, Jamil Al Yamadi, uh, a definite candidate, um, whether he plays as a right back or a right midfielder uh, in the cup. Okay, let's move on to the left winger. So again, this is kind of the upper left quadrant of the field. It could be a left winger, could be a left attacking midfielder, or um, it could be a left forward. Uh, on the left side, it actually has a bigger range for Oman than most teams um, because sometimes it may stretch backwards to being a left midfielder or stretch forward to being a, a left forward. Um, and I've actually started giving some of the summary there, so I should introduce the candidates before I continue. And we've heard his name before. It's uh, Zahir Al-Akbari, who uh, we mentioned because he does sometimes, sometimes come back and play as a left midfielder. Uh, we have another candidate, um, uh, Yazed Al-Mashani. He's at the possible and unlikely level. We're really just naming him because he seems to be the only uh, alternative here. Uh, he appeared twice in late 2022, but was not selected uh, in 2023. So um, uh, it's obviously an out of position player who is the backup for this position um, rather than Al Mashani. Uh, okay, uh, I'll just do a bio on Al Akbari and then talk about the position. So, uh, he has been with the team since 2019 with 33 caps and um, started 16 of their 21 games over the past two years. Uh, he was subbed in for two and then not selected for three matches. So, uh, that's why we have him as a definite candidate. He's almost always selected. And uh, recently, uh, especially recently, has been occupying the upper left quadrant of the field, ranging from left midfielder to left winger to left attacking midfielder. Uh, interestingly, when he plays as a forward, it tends to be as a right forward, 
rather than as a left forward. So three times he appeared as a right forward and only one time as a left forward. So that's a odd little detail. Uh, anyway, uh, getting back to the summary, which I started with, yes, it uh, uh, stretches from left midfield uh, all the way up to left forward since he has played that position. Uh, but in terms of players, it's fairly straightforward. It's always... Uh, um, uh, it's almost always Al Akbari, and when it isn't, it will be attacking midfielder Al uh, Yaye, who will meet soon, uh, sometimes covering this position. But it looks like uh, Al Mashani uh, was considered um, as uh, uh, the backup for this position and then uh, not uh, basically rejected. And they went with Al Yaye as the. Uh, as the covering position. Okay, over to the right wing, and uh, we have a likely candidate in um, Abdul Rahman Al Mushafri, and a possible candidate in Ahmed Al Dawi. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at Al Mushafri. He uh, got his first appearance on the bench in March of 2023 and then started three of their remaining seven games and he was subbed in for two and on the bench for two others. So he's always been selected uh, since his uh, call-up, first call-up in March 2023, though uh, not always as a starter, only uh, less than half the time there. Uh, the uh, possible candidate, Ahmed Al-Adawi, actually has no uh, caps for the national team. He's only 18 years old. He got his first appearance on the bench in January of this year, 2023, and didn't start any of the remaining 12 games uh, or even sub in, actually. Uh, but he was on the bench for eight and not selected for four. But we have him as a possible candidate because two of the games... Uh, he was uh, on the bench for two of the games there in September, so their most recent game. So just on the bench uh, for Al Dawi, but Al, uh, sorry, Al Al Dawi, but has been regularly called up uh, recently. Okay, so let's take a look at the position of right winger. We said when it's a more defensive role, it tends to be um, it tends to be the right uh, midfielder Al Yamadi. Uh, or else the central midfielder Fawazi, uh, uh, sorry, Fawaz, uh, uh, doing it. When it's a more attacking role, um, which is actually less than half the time uh, when it's like a, a right attacking midfielder, uh, it's an out of position player uh, who covers it. So it'll tend to be that same uh, attacking midfielder, Salah, Al Yaye, uh, or it'll be the forward who tends to play as a right forward, uh, Isam Al Sabi. And we'll meet both of those players uh, soon. But generally, uh, if it's an attacking role, it's covered by an out of position player. And uh, it looks like they're trying out Al Mushafri uh, for the role, but um, it doesn't look like it's really happening. Uh, and they see him more as a backup player. All right, time to move on to the forward line, and that includes attacking midfielders. So let's look at our candidates, and we've mentioned his name a couple of times now, uh, Salah Al-Yaye, uh, as a definite candidate. And then we have uh, just one uh, possible candidate in uh, Tamim Al-Balushi. So let's take a look at Salah Al-Yaye. Uh, he's been with the team since 2016 with 51 caps and eight goals. And uh, he was part of the Asian Cup squad in 2019. He appeared in all four games, but only started two of them uh, there. And uh, he has started 15 of their 21 games over the past two years. Um, on the bench for three and not selected for three others. Uh, a bit concerningly, uh, one of them was at the end and two of them were uh, right at the beginning of the period. Um, so Salah al uh, we saw that sometimes, uh, even though he's coded as an attacking midfielder and does play the central attacking midfield role, but uh, he does uh, sometimes start uh, on the wing, uh, left wing and right wing both. 
uh, kind of as a left winger or left attacking midfielder or uh, the same on the right side. So um, Tamim Al Balushi uh, has uh, got his first appearance on the bench just recently in September 2023 and uh, started one of the two remaining games uh, and was on the bench for the other one. So perhaps making a bid to uh, uh, make it to the final squad, uh, Tamim Al Balushi. Uh, okay, so overall, when they use uh, a central attacking midfield, which is only about half of the time, uh, it's usually Al Ayaye, or sometimes, as we said before, uh, central midfielder Orshad Al Alawa, uh, Al -Alawa comes up uh, and plays the role. Okay, uh, we don't have any uh, players coded as secondary strikers, but we uh, have some forwards to talk about. And I'm actually going to uh, uh, begin with uh, a player who's off the squad since March 22, but he features in the uh, in the narrative, and that is uh, Khalid Al Hajri. Uh, he's only 29 years old, so uh, still a chance of him coming back. But he last appeared in 2019 and he was part of the uh, squad in the 2019 Asian Cup um, uh, starting two games there. Uh, Al Hashri has uh, 18 goals in 44 caps since 2017 so um, it wouldn't be a shock to see him uh, coming back into the squad. Anyway our main candidates begin with Isam Al Sabri uh, sorry Isam Al Sabi a uh, definite candidate, and we have Musan al Ghassani as a likely candidate, and also Omar Al-Malki as a likely candidate. And then we have a possible candidate in uh, Rabia Al-Alawi. He was the one who I ur urged you not to mix up with Arshan Al-Alawi. Uh, this Rabia Al-Alawi is a forward at the possible level. And uh, for most of these positions, actually, we do have a couple of other names of players who've been off the squad for a while or players who seem so unlikely that we're not putting them on the list in order to keep things a bit shorter. Um, but we will bring uh, those players back in if we, uh, um, if we see them on the final roster. Uh, okay, Isam al Sabi uh, is then the... Uh, definite candidate. Al Sabi started 12 of their 21 games over the past two years. He was subbed in for four and not selected for five matches, but those were the first five matches of the period. So uh, he's been called up uh, consistently uh, recently. Um, okay, and then uh, Musan Al Ghassani, the uh, First of the likely candidates, he's been with the team since 2017 with 47 caps and nine goals. Uh, Al Ghazani was also part of the uh, Asian Cup in 2019. He was actually subbed into game one and then gained a starting position for the three games following. Uh, over the past two years, though, he's only started eight of their 21 games. He was subbed in for five and uh, not selected for eight matches. Um, uh, two. So uh, Al Ghassani uh, was not selected for the Gulf Cup though and uh, some of the games surrounding it uh, but he was called up for the last six games so that boosted him up to a uh, likely candidate in our, in our opinion. Okay, the other likely candidate, Omar Al Malki um, he actually had two appearances on the bench in 2016 uh, but didn't actually get his fast uh, his first match until March 2022 and he started three of their remaining games um, three of their remaining games subbed in for five and on the bench for nine so just two matches that he uh, wasn't selected for so even though uh, he's not much of a starter he uh, is is called up regularly. Um, okay, Rabia Al Alawi is our possible candidate, and he's been with the team since 2018 with 33 caps and eight goals. And he has more starts actually over the past two years, uh, eight starts over uh, of the 21 games. And he was subbed in for one, 
Uh, but the reason we have him as possible is he, he wasn't selected for 10 matches, but these include the last six matches. So recently, uh, he has not been selected, and that's why we have him as less likely than uh, Al Ghassani. Okay, that is uh, just three candidates for forward, so uh, that's a bit uh, slim pickings up at the up at the front. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them bring uh, a few more candidates in uh, in the November games. We'll have to see. Uh, just uh, finishing then with a summary of the forward position. Uh, usually um, it is two, but sometimes just one. And uh, it was uh, uh, Khalid Al Hajri at first, uh, uh, but he was replaced um, after March 2022 by, uh, briefly by Al Ghassani at first, but then Al Ghassani uh, disappeared for a while and then came back in recently. So um, during that period when Al Ghassani was not selected, Rabia Al Alawi uh, had a period of starts, especially in the Gulf Cup, and Al Malki also saw some starts during that period. Uh, Sabi is also there about half the time. But I have to say, no one has really nailed down uh, either of the forward positions, um, although Al Ghassani is starting to in recent times. And we did see some out of position players uh, covering uh, the role. Um, left winger Al Agbari, uh, as we said, has started four times uh, as a forward. Uh, usually he just starts, though. Uh, when there are two forwards rather than one. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of our look at the players, and it'll be interesting to see uh, both in November who they bring and, of course, who they bring to the uh, final squad. We'll see how accurate we were <laughs> in our uh, guesses here. Um, so moving on to section three, uh, this is what we'll be doing in part two of the podcast or the media cast after the... Uh, final rosters are published. We'll go through our list again that we compiled here and we'll uh, make note of any non-selections that are a surprise. So that would basically be candidates at the likely or definite level who are not selected. And we'll also mention surprise inclusions. So that would be uh, unlikely or players uh, we considered off the team, uh, some of whom we, we didn't we didn't list here uh, because we didn't want to make it too long, but we will uh, reintroduce them if they are uh, included in the final squad. And then there's always a couple of new names uh, added to the squad, so we will let you know a little bit about those players too. The other thing we'll do in part two is an update on the injuries. So um, we didn't really talk about it here because... Um, uh, we didn't see any long-term injuries. I think there was just uh, uh, one, uh, the right, or oh, sorry, the left back uh, that they seem to be considering as a backup. So we'll update you on him and any new injuries that uh, uh, come closer to the cut. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you join us for part two. We originally planned to tag on our past, present, and future plans for the media cast, but we have instead decided to put a link to that 10-minute video in the show notes. It covers what we're working on and what we plan to do over the next nine months. I'd like to thank the Burr Abacham and Pixabay for the wonderful music you hear in this media cast. The title is called Arabic Trap. <laughs>